Okay, in this video, I'm just going to be quickly showing how to uh, reset a Cisco 860 um, DSL router um, to factory default. And there's uh, various ways of doing it, but the convenient thing about this router is it actually has a reset switch on the back of it. And basically, I'm just going to show you the setup. And... Right, so as you can see on the back, I've got the the a USB um, serial adapter, and it's connected into the console port, and that's pretty much the only connection I I have. And you can see I had to make my own sort of manual cable because it seems it's hard to find one. Well, it was hard to find one which was sh like short enough. And of course, you can buy the Cisco one, but then, um, why bother paying that much money when it's just quicker making one yourself? Right, so... Basically, that's the Cisco connected and turned off. Right. So. And so basically, when you're using Minicom, so what I'm going to be doing is using Minicom to connect to it. And... I've got the USB um, zero connected on sort of TTY USB zero, and one thing you'll notice is that um, where I was using this before, it said it has the baud rate of one nine two zero, and so eight bits, no parity, and one stop bit. And basically, for Cisco, it has to be nine thousand six hundred. So for Minicom, I'm just going to change that in the configuration so as, as it says you do control a z to get the config up and then i basically need to change the um it's where it says configure minicom which, which is o it says control a o oops oh, sorry you just press the key o by itself and so I just have to basically change the um, speed of the serial port. Right, so the bits is 1920, so that's choose E for that. And so I want 9600, which is C. And yeah, so basically that's that's the right one now. So it's 9,600 9, bits per second, 8 bits, no parity, and 1 stop bit. So I press enter to come out of there. And enter out of there, and then uh, just basically exit that. Okay, so now that should be correct for connecting to the Cisco. As you can see down here, which is the 9600. So if I just turn it on. You see the lights come on now. Alright, so now we have the Cisco booting up. And the thing about Cisco is that they're famed for how long it takes for the iOS to boot up. And, and they certainly don't disappoint you.
that's one thing I noticed about the Cisco as well is that the those errors, it's about markers, they actually come up when you reset it. So it seems that the default configuration has some um some mistakes in it. You think with the amount of money Cisco make, you think they'd be able to sort stuff like that out. Okay, so um, basically that's it up, and as you can see, I've already reset this once. But what's happening is I've entered some configuration information into it, so I just want to uh, clear that out before I sort of send it on. And that's what the good thing about this particular brand of Cisco, and you're probably advised to make sure to get one of them if you're ever going to buy one, is that it has the reset pin on it, and Basically, it's, it's actually, you don't need the console in order to do the reset, but it comes in handy to know that the reset actually works. So I'm just going to hold the pin in. Alright, so that's it in. And so if you, after a certain, yeah, see. Oh, actually, I, I just remembered, yeah, that that happened just, yeah, you know, you're supposed to press the reset, well, anyway, um, so I think what happens is if you hold reset while it's booting, then it aborts the, the built-in configuration, alright, so I'll just turn it off, so, I'm going to hold the reset down while the, it's booting up, Yeah, so you notice where it says configuration reset button pushing event detecting. So because I had the button, the reset button in while turning it on, so now you know you can let go of the reset. So that's that's one way having the console on comes in handy. Is you know that the configuration reset is successful because it tells the event has been detecting. And so now what it's going to do is go up through the super slow boot up process and then at the end you basically would end up with a um a reset system and what happens at the end is that the uh as you can see the message it tells you that the default username and password is cisco and cisco and at that point you can just configure it and then just basically put in whatever settings you want
another thing you might get confused at, you notice it said press return to get started and then all that sort of mess scrolled up. So what happened is that when the hardware check for the interface state, it happens after the login page. So it looks as if basically, you know, there's no login window there, but it's actually it scrolled off. Sorry, the the indication that you can press return is scrolled off. So when you press return now, that's when you get the the default page for when you've reset it comes up to tell you about the change in the password. And then that's when you can type in the username. Okay, thanks for watching. See you.